Oh, oh, ah, such a manly guitar. It's a 27 inch six string. How about that? What's up and welcome to FAQ 148. Let's click a little button here. What's up? My name is Ola England. I'm the Swede and I play in the bands The Haunted and Feared. And I also run my YouTube channel and I have my own uh, guitar brand as well. And we're here to answer your questions, okay? So let's just start. Mac Anthony, hey Ola, I saw in your interview with Lee Anderton that you were able to see Pantera live. Since I'm only 16 and will never get to see him, I was wondering if you're able to tell us what the show was like and what the experience was. Seeing your idol perform in front of you and anything else that comes to mind when you think back to that show. Okay, thank you so much, Mac Anthony. So I saw Pantera on the Reinventing the Steel tour uh, back in 2000 or 2001. I don't remember if the show was in 2000 or 2001. Doesn't matter. Anyway, it was, as anyone would imagine, it was excellent. It was amazing. Uh, and uh, obviously I was not let down. You know, I had high hopes and high expectations of the band because obviously it's my favorite band. And uh, they did not disappoint at all. And who was the opening act? I think maybe Satyricon and Power Man. Power Man, you remember those guys? Power Man 5000 or 2000 or whatever. And uh, Pantera, man, I remember they opened up with, I think it was Hellbound from the new album with that, you know, flanger happening. Jigga, 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 jigga. And yeah, man, I mean, sort of unreal to see him live. You know, during the 90s, I was watching the VHS videos of, you know, watch it go and uh, you know the Pantera home videos and to finally see him live was very weird. I lived off watching those videos and then finally seeing them, uh, them up on stage is definitely weird and uh, but at the same time amazing as well. And a friend of mine managed to catch uh, Dimebag's guitar pick. He got two of them and uh, then the singer in my band asked if he could have the other one and he got the other one and I didn't get it. I, I didn't get one. That's how it is. That's a bummer. I mean I remember the sound it's not the best sounding show I've been to, uh, but it was a really, really kick-ass show and the band just performed super well. I remember Phil was a little uh, drunk on stage, but I didn't feel that it uh, did anything bad to the show at all. I, I, I just remember it as being a really, really fucking kick-ass show. And obviously, you know, I had tickets to go to the uh, Tattoo the Planet thing. And that was in 2001. Yes, okay, so uh, Reinventing a Steel was probably... That show was 1999 or 2000. And then I had tickets to go to Tattoo the Planet, which was in 2001. And then 9-11 happened and the Warner decided to keep all their artists back at bay. So Pantera didn't come back to Sweden. So that Reinventing the Steel show was their last show in Sweden, uh, which is a complete bummer. So there you go. That's my experience. Hello, camera up there. What's up? Kellen Morrison, Yola. I was wondering if any of the songs on your upcoming solo album have been inspired by your Riff of the Week challenge. Love from Scotland. Thank you so much. That's an excellent question. And yes, I must say that some of the stuff that I've done for uh, Sunday with Ola Riff challenge has now entered into a section on the solo album. So yes, the songs or some of the song ideas that I made for Sunday with Ola Riff Challenge has now become part of my solo album. So that's completely correct. Uh, you know, the Sunday with Ola Riff Challenge has definitely challenged me. I mean, it's a challenge. It's supposed to challenge you. Uh, but it's definitely challenged me to write something every week. And it's so far, I think it's been working pretty good. I and mean, before this, there could be a year without, you know, me writing anything. And now, you know, I write something every week. And, you know, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. As a good friend would say. But uh, at least it keeps me writing. Some weeks are better than others. And, uh, but you know, you have to have the shitty ideas to, you know, be able to differentiate them with good ideas, if that makes any sense. But, you know, the good ideas wouldn't be good if it wasn't for the shit ideas, okay? Does that make sense? No, thank you. Jaffo Pitei Uai. Hi, Mr. Ola. During this pandemic times we're living in, I can't help for wonder what was the last amazing live show you saw and what concert band you are looking forward to see after the pandemic is over. Cheers from Panama. That's cool. To be quite honest, I don't think I remember the last show I was on. Uh, I remember a text, I saw a text from one of my friends who was asking in February, because it was in February that the pandemic kind of got going and all that. He was asking if I was going to the Testament show that was in Stockholm, but I didn't go because I think I was on vacation. And just after that, you know, everything closed down. But not to think of it, I think my last show 
was Leprous, maybe. Where I went to see Leprous with uh, Luis. I think that was the last show, at least. And, uh... Was it? My memory is the worst, I'm sorry. Don't ask me questions about my past. Uh, it's not gonna... yeah. I'm the worst with the past. I'm, I'm just looking forward, guys. Continue to look forward. Great, thank you. Nick Figueroa. Question, Ola. What is the difference between the Randall Satan and the Bogner Ubershell amplifier? Also, what would be your top five amplifiers? Great. Uh, differences between Randall Satan and a Bogner Ubershell, I would say it's all the difference between them. <laughs> They're completely differently built amplifiers. Uh, the Bogner Ubershell is a completely different monster. I've only tried one once. And it was a long time ago, so I can't say what I think about it. However, I do have a Bogner amplifier over there that I am going to demo. Is it before this FAQ or after? I don't know. That's just a little, little something something there. Maybe it's a teaser, maybe it's not, because I already made a video. The Randall Satan is... I mean, I think the Randall Satan in itself has way more gain stages. So it's a little bit more modern sounding than the Bogner Rubichal, while the Bogner Rubichal to me, in my years that I remember, is that it sounds a little bit more classic, you know, a little bit more saturated, in the sense that, you know, the classic saturated sound, while the Randall Satan is more of a dry, tight sound. Does that make any sense? What was the other question? Top 5 amplifiers. Now, this is a tough one. Extremely tough. I would have to say that my first on the list would probably be a Mesa dual rectifier. Not because of the sound, maybe it's not the most modern, perfect sounding amplifier out there, but it's an amplifier that means a lot to me. It was my first tube amplifier and, you know, I owned that amplifier while I was, you know, searching for tone and, and you know, experimenting with shit and, you know, putting a tube screamer in there uh, just opened up the world. The Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier has a very special spot in my heart. Uh, also, the Angle Savage is up there. It's also, it's, it was my main amplifier for seven years when I was playing with my old band and playing live and all that. It's just like, it delivered immediately and uh, it was uh, basically the first really really modern sounding amplifier back in the day back during the 90s when that got released obviously you had the rectifier on the 5150 but out of its own the angle savage was probably the most brutal one without using any pedals back day uh, back in the day uh, other than that kind of thinking i like my mesa boogie mark 2c plus uh, that's a great amplifier what else what do I have? The 5150 is a classic. I love that as well. I don't know, man. Randall Satan. My Fortin Satan, maybe? Because it's so fucking brutal. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There's just so many fucking options out there. And uh, I don't know what to say. I think that my favorite amplifier might change throughout the years. You know, I'm really uh, into the Badlander right now. That's a great amplifier. But, you know, I haven't tried the Bogner yet over there. And, uh, I don't know, I have a Roadster. Holy shit, the Roadster is amazing. And, uh, Orange Amplifier. <laughs> you know, there's just too many options out there. You know, sometimes I have an urge to play an Orange Amplifier. Sometimes I just want to play an Angle. And sometimes I just want to play, uh, you know, a plugin, maybe. I don't know. Hope that answered your question. Thank you. Shane Pache. I think it's interesting how you have to explain who you are and your channel almost every FAQ and Sunday with Ola. Well, this is basic internet knowledge right here. Thank you for the question, by the way. But, I mean, I have to assume that there will be a majority of people out there who have no fucking idea of who I am. So, that's why I have to present myself in every video. I mean, I mean right now, I'm like around 10,000 new subscribers every month. You know, that's a lot of people. And, you know, maybe it's their, maybe they're watching this video. This, maybe this is their first video they're watching of me. I have to present myself. And, you know, it takes just a couple seconds. I'm just trying to uh, be a nice person here. And, you know, not assume that I'm a celebrity and people, you know, I have a large audience. I mean, if I meet you for the first time, I present myself. Okay? It's just, uh, it's just simple uh, and honest courtesy, I think. No? Thank you. Frasher512. Uh, Hola. Howdy from Texas. My question is, what was the most brutal live show or best live show you've been lucky to catch from opener to headliner perspective? Thanks and cheers. Uh, most brutal live show I've seen was probably Slipknot back in... This was also like beginning 2000 when they released their uh, their albums. Not their, their, their first album, because then I'm going to get pissed if I say it's the first album, but their debut album 
which is called Slipknot, I think. And uh, I saw the show. It was like 700 people, 800 people in a small show. Uh, I was standing on a balcony and it was just so intense. Everything was just so sweaty and I'd never been to a show like this. And, you know, the live energy of uh, Slipknot as well. I mean, back in the day, they were pissed. They were seriously pissed off. And you could see that and, you know, they were just going 150% on stage. Every single one of them. Uh, and, you know, the DJ guy, he went up to the balcony, fucking throw himself out of there. And, uh, you know, they were punching each other on the face. I mean, I don't support violence, but they were kicking the shit out of each other right there. And it was, it was, just, they were spitting on each other. And it was just such a fucking <coughs> immense show right there. This was Slipknot back in 2000 or 2001, something like that. Holy shit. That is a show to remember. And now Slipknot are playing arenas and, you know, you can't really, and they're, you know, this is 20 years later. Obviously, they're not going to be able to have that same energy 20 years later. I mean, now they have money <laughs> and they don't, you know, they probably don't hate the world as much. You know, they probably have money. They probably have it good now. They probably have kids. And when you get kids, you know, you're just less angry with things. That's just how it is. You just mature a little bit when you get older. That's, a, that's just a natural process right there. So I would say Slipknot. Thank you. Philip Colby. Hey, Ola, as someone who struggles to keep up with uh, new music and new gear, my question is, how do you keep up with it all? I find I'm always missing releases of music and there's so much great gear out there that I don't see. Your channel has helped a lot with finding new gear. So thank you for that. Thank you, buddy. I completely agree with what you're saying. There's just so much new music today. It's really hard to keep up. I mean, there's so many bands. It's easier to really uh, release albums. It's just, there's just a lot of saturation in the music scene, I would say. So how do you keep up? Well, I listen to recommendations. Like if someone, like a member of my Discord is like, have you checked out the new uh, Mr. Bungle album? And I'm like, oh shit, Mr. Bungle, that's a band I like. Uh, sure, of course, you know, I'll go listen to him. And I get recommendations from others, basically. And, uh, you know, sometimes, very rarely, I go into the Spotify new metal thing. A lot of the stuff that's on there is maybe not to my liking, but sometimes I find something that's really like sticking out. Some, some new and uh, uh, fresh thrash metal or something like that. That's really like kicking my ass. And uh, regarding gear, you know, I'm lucky because I'm in this position where a lot of brands send me, uh, you know, emails and tell me what's up. So, uh, but at the same time, I just stopped reading a lot of emails because I'm getting a lot of emails. So I'm not really in the loop right now of what's getting released. But in the same way there, a lot of my members on my Discord are for like, hey man, have you checked out this new pedal? Have you checked out this and this and this? And that's how I learned to know about it because, you know, they tell me to check out stuff. And uh, I, I just want to say thank you to my beautiful members. Thank you. Did I say you guys are amazing? No? Well, you are, okay? I'm saying that right now. Uh, so yeah, and you know, it's sort of like my job to keep up with the news regarding gear. So, you know, I try to read uh, the magazines, you know, Guitar World and all that. Just tr trying to keep myself in the loop. You know, thank you. Sean Carney, hey, hola, hearing your story, I have a question. Have you experienced a setback you thought you couldn't overcome, but then found a way to navigate it? Meaning, maybe had a band disband suddenly, or maybe a relationship, personal or professional, go sideways. It's easy for us as viewers to lose sight of the fact that challenges occur for everyone and the, that we all need to keep pushing because good days are around the corner. This is an excellent statement and an excellent question. I've gone through a fair bit of things throughout my life, and you know, that that's that's just natural for for getting older. I mean you just get a lot more experience and you learn to value the real friendships, the real people around you. And, you know, you get disappointed about some people and, uh, you know, and sometimes there's a tragedy in your life. You, you know, for me, my, I think my biggest tragedy that I have been a part of, I had to put my dog away. That's probably the hardest I've ever uh mourned about someone or something and also but then there's also you know life events you know my daughter having and my wife complications uh, while giving birth you know stuff that really uh you know challenges you and makes you think in a completely different way and makes you reevaluate what different things in life what's important to you basically so i mean there's different ways for people to to handle a tragedy or to handle a life event. Some people dwell 
you know, uh, and you know, ask why it happened, why did this and this happen? And some people just, you know, quickly move on. I'm one of the people that likes to cut ties. Like if, if I have a friend that, you know, disappoints me or like, it's not who I thought it was and brings negativity to me. I just cut that guy off. Uh, fair and square uh, because I mean I don't need that in my life I don't need that negativity in my life I want to look forward and some people they just drag you behind you know or try to drag you down with them so I think it's very important to uh, you know just cutting ties might sound rash if you have band members that are keeping you back if you want to you know you want to make it as a band but the other guys they just hold you back I mean I think it's very important to be rash and just cut those guys out it might sound tough but I mean, do you really want to make it as a band? Well, maybe that's the step you have to take. That's just the way I've, I've learned and the way that has worked for me to move on with things. It's just to, you know, just cut the ties altogether. But that's just me. I know people are different and people are different on how uh, they handle, you know, their ghosts and situations. But uh, what was the question? Uh, okay, have you experienced a setback? Yes, I have experienced setbacks. And uh, a lot of, let's just say a lot of people have disappointed me in the past. And, you know, it just further, you know, enhances my image of just working with yourself and just trying to work with as few people as po possible. Because the more people you move into an equation, uh, unless they're the right people, of course, uh, the, the, the tougher it will get. Because a lot of people suck. But there's also a lot of good people out there, okay? Great question. Great answer. Bad Blood 44. Hello, Ola. You mentioned you're in the solo writing process for your forthcoming album. Any thoughts on inviting someone to do a guest solo? Petrucci, perhaps. Hmm. Or do you prefer this project to be 100% Ola England production? Looking forward to the new release. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, that's a great question. Prefer this project to be 100% Ola England production? Well, you know, when I made the first album, I wanted to, you know, to say that the first album, I carry that on my shoulders myself. So I didn't bring in any other guitar players to do guest solos. I had uh, saxophone solos and whatnot, but I wanted to make the solo album myself and, you know, make the solos, the guitar solos and all that, because I thought it, it's, I just want to be able to say that I made this album and uh, this is me. But now with the second album, I just can do whatever I want. I feel way more open with to invite people into the uh, projects. And I actually have uh, Jeff Loomis is guesting on a solo. Uh, Petrucci, I, I think I don't, I don't dare ask him if he wants to be a part of this album. Uh, you know, I do have his contacts, but I just don't want to bother the guy. I, I, I'm just too much of a fan, I think, to ask him about that. But uh, yeah, there might be more guests as well. And uh, I have two members that are guests on the album, so that's cool. Um, other than that, yeah, I don't mind having guest uh, uh, guitar players on the new album. Uh, obviously, I want to be able to carry, you know, to be able to carry the songs. I want to bring in a guest artist if the song asks for it, okay? Just to add a... a, a, a uh, yeah, Thomas Mims, I see that Music Man headstock over there. Man, he's right. Let's bring him forward. Okay, yes, I've had this for a while. It's uh, Ernie Ball Music Man JP15. It's uh, Ernie Ball Family Reserve that I found on Reverb. And, uh, you know, I told you guys I wanted to try a proper JPM. And, uh, you know, then I sat down with a member, because that's what we do. We checked out Reverb together, and uh, I found this. And uh, I thought it looked incredible. And it wasn't too expensive for an earning ball, so I bought it. But I'm not going to play it too much because I'm making a video, obviously, and I'm still waiting for my uh, JP amplifier. So I want to do a, like a, you know, a, a double action on that one. I want to have this guitar and the Mesa JP amplifier in the same video, and the world will implode. That's my plan, at least. Anyways, guys, that was the FAQ for today. Hope you had a good time. Hope I answered your questions. And please leave questions in the comment section of this video. I need more questions, okay? Uh, thank you for watching, guys. You can subscribe to my channel. It's down there. I'm Ole England. I play in the bands Feared and The Haunted. I also have uh, my own guitar company. It's not this. It's that. Thank you. Bye.